Tonight, we have the legendary from Brooklyn, New York, founding member of Jamie Americans, the legendary Mr. Kenny Vance. After this show, I'd love to hear your feedback, so put your comments down below. Now, put your hands together. Give a big round of applause to Mr. Kenny Vance, all on Artist on Record right now. Bam! My group, Jamie Americans, the Four Seasons, and the Beach Boys were the three top American groups in the 60s. We actually opened the show the first time the Beatles came to America. We opened the show the first time the Rolling Stones came to America. We were these guys with these blue alpaca sweaters and turtlenecks on. And the Jay and the Americans thing lasted for about 12 years with many, many top 10 hits. The reality of the group, though, who the personnel was, was something other than what was perceived by the public. The suits and the smiling and the hits was just the facade of what was really going With it from the beginning to basically the last incarnation mm -hmm. of Jane the Americans lasted 12 years. Okay. And the last two years, uh, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker were our backup band. Wow. And, and they actually recorded some of the stuff with us. Wow. And then, you know, and then that was around 1971. And then I believe 70, then they went out to California and made the Can't Buy a Thrill album where they, you know, did the Do It Again and Reeling in the Years and became so, Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Did, were your backup band, did, did, they, did you hear them writing songs? You go, these guys got something. They're going to do something. Oh, right? no, I, I made I made albums with them called Becker and Furtag in the early years. I was actually the lead singer. because Donald didn't want to sing. Really? Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I have a, a whole bunch of material, you know, stuff that I was the lead singer of. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Uh, when I was with Jay and the Americans, we had an office in the Brill Building. And you know where where Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoll had an office. They they were 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 still on the tenth floor, and we had an office on the fourth floor. And one day around 1968, these two guys knock on the door and they say, you know, we can't. We've been you know trying to get somebody to listen to our stuff, but they said if you don't have a tape, you know, you we 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 don't you know you can't. And I said, no, come on in. I had a, you know, an upright piano in one of the rooms. And they came in and they sat down at the piano. And, you know, uh, uh, Donald sat down at the piano. Walter stood next to him. And they sang songs like uh, uh, Brain Tap Shuffle. And the bloody brain tap shuffle. Lose your mind. Uh, um, shuffling up your downs. Circles gone. Any world that I'm welcome to. And, um, you know, I, I don't know why, but I just, I had, a, I, I, I connected to it on yeah. some, on some level. And I, you know, I started to work with those guys and I, I wound up working with them for several years. The boys in this town. And, um, but they weren't trending. That music at that time, when they knocked on your door, that music was not trending. It was not what you were hearing out there. No, really. no, no. Yeah. I know, I know. But uh, I, I think I specialize in that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, I just felt like this is too unbelievable. As, as, as the world has discovered. Yeah. There's yeah. something just so, you know, you can't really put your finger on it. It, it's, it's just unbelievable stuff in terms of the poetry of it, in terms of the musicality of it, in terms of the history of where a lot of the influences came from, uh, you know, and, and, and somehow were able to fit that into a slot where it worked in the pop music world, which was really, was, which was the feat that they had to overcome and 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 they did that and um you know would do it again and that first album can't buy a thrill back, Jack, do it again. Right here. 
Look at yeah. this right there. Yeah. Which Skunk Baxter is the, the guitar player on that. It's sure. A big showcase for Skunk on that record, which amazing player. A beautiful guy. I I work, played, he played one time, it was probably 19, I can't remember, maybe 2000, where the movie Looking for an Echo came out, starring Armand DeSante. <laughs> party at the hard rock in new york and so there was a band up there and you know all the guys from the movie and we were just jamming and he was there and he came up and you know i was doing whatever doing my thing <laughs> and all of a sudden i hear the most incredible stuff going on and i and it was him and the guy, I just, you know, and I never forgot that. And I said, this guy is, this guy is really like a cut above, you know, a cut above and um, very nice. From what I know of him, a very nice guy. <laughs> if I told you this, I, I, for the last, uh, you know, even last time we spoke, you know, I've been working on a film called Heart and Soul for about yes. uh, seven years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's taken me 20 years of footage and I'm getting very close to the end of it. I think on Facebook or somewhere out there, you'd have to ask my son lad, but uh, they, they are starting to send like different things out that, that uh, are from the film. And, uh, you know, a couple of, like, let, I think a month ago, uh, we lost Jay Black. I'm going to come out with be this sweet, but at the end of this one, you do the bit, and then you come out. Could you say, that's not nice. Uh, run down Caramia with him, maybe? Oh, wait a while. Wait a while. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, after... Jay Black is the lead singer on, you know, Come a Little Bit Closer. What? what? Come a bit closer. On May 5th, ah! you only get one chance to save the galaxy. Let's lock the door. Caramia. Walking in the rain, this magic moment. This magic moment. All of a sudden, all of the articles, you know, were realizing, oh, this guy was, this guy was tremendous. My ex-partner, I can't believe it. My ex-partner, I feel like Jerry Lewis on the telethon. As a matter of fact, with Jay here and Dion here, I feel like Sammy Davis. Mr. Jay Black. You know, I think if he might have heard that during his lifetime, he probably would have had a different life. But, uh, you know, but, you know, Jane, the Americans on many, many levels were trivialized mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, and relegated to a certain scene because because they weren't really embraced by the music community. And, you um, you know, to, just to see the the accolades that he got in in you know in passing away were you know from Rolling Stone and from places that you know up until that point you'd never hear anything from. It's so unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. 
when gone, you, it's, it, I mean, while he was alive, I would always say, what a voice. You know, there are these guys, uh, I, I, they're, you know, young guys and, and they, they react to songs or they react to videos. Yeah. I, I, you, you've seen them on. Yeah. On the, yeah. Yeah. The, the young, the, what do you call that? I don't know what they call it, but there's, there's young kids that'll go listen to music and they'll like the first time they never heard it before. Right. So yeah. they'll, they never heard Jay and the Americans sing Caribbean and they put it up and they're going, wow, you know, they're just going crazy. <laughs> it's so funny you know, to see that. Whoa. Wow. Must we say goodbye? I mean, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Never gets old. No. And the band. Beautiful. I mean, yeah. you know what's so good? I just got to listen to that with you. You know how cool that is for me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it reminds me of an Italian restaurant. We could be eating at an Italian restaurant, and this goes good with the marinara sauce. Rayo's is- in, yeah. in New York. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, that that's ingrained in the consciousness of of you know, the America that I know anyway, you know, like who doesn't know that? It's iconic. This magic moment. Yeah. Never grows old, this music. It stays young forever. And it, it just brings these memories back and puts you in a good mood, you know? These songs were all recorded on four tracks. That's, inc- that's inc- It sounds so big. It's crazy. Four track. Well, in those days, you know, the engineers, Mm -hmm. they had a different skill. There was a different, their gig was to get the room to sound great. And their gig was to get the microphones all placed in the right way. And then to do a mix. Because mostly it was, that was, it was like taking a, a, a photograph it was live, mostly. And then as time went by, they could put, you know, the whole band on two tracks and then, you know, play around with the, the, the extra two tracks that they had or maybe have a tape machine going on that they yeah. could fly something onto and then fly it back. So that was the that was this that was it. Now you could go in and you have fifty, tra- you know, uh, you know, as many tracks as you as you yeah, want. Yeah, you could do anything you want. You could do it right at your house with a whole system. But it's just, but you hear the tones, the warm, you know, just. Uh, well, there was something about everybody showing up, showing in up. the room. The morale. Everybody showed up in the room, you know. The morale, the whole, the whole, the team the whole is here. Com- yeah. The whole thing of it, yeah. Yes, the the, the whole vibe. When you would do these tracks, was was the band were they playing with you guys live too, or that was already taped? No, that was live. They were live. Wow. Yeah, like I remember being being there when we made "She Cried." Mm, beautiful song. You know, because with "She Cried," it's it's the original J J Trainer. There was mm-hmm. two Js, and um, and uh, uh, it's a long story. You know, no, one day, I, you know, you know th- there's no one that, you know, your stories are the best stories. And you know, what, <laughs> it's that there's nobody better than you. I'm telling you, she cried, which now did, did he do, was Jay, uh, the original Jay, was he in another, with the original Hushabai? Did he record? No, he didn't no. sing the original. He no. took, he, you know, the mystics, the mystics. Yeah. The mystics had a guy, the lead singer was uh, Phil Krakalici and he had a problem and so so they were looking for a new singer and we were all managed i was in a group called the harbolites we were all managed by a guy named jim gribble you're 15 at that time right yeah but 1619 broadway wow i mean 16 1697 broadway which is the uh, 54th street it's the ed sullivan theater building where they did the late show david letterman's show from and so Jay, so right before Jay Trainer sang the lead on a song called Blue Star by the Mystics, mm-hmm. they had another guy in the group by the name of Paul Simon. And he sang with the Mystics on a song called All Through the Night. 
And then, you know, he went out, he wound up being, um, before Tom and Jerry, he wound up being uh, Tico and the Triumphs on, I think, Mala Records, M-A-L-A. Yeah. And um, so Jay Trainer was there and we were there as the Harbolites and we just, we kind of connected. And then a friend of ours got us an audition at, Jerry Lieber and Mike Stola in the Brill Building, and we went there. And if you li- play "She Cried" and you listen to it, you hear Jay Trainer. He's seventeen years old. His performance is, you know, is just so incredible that the record became a smash. And if it wasn't for him, his performance you know, we probably would never have had the hit that we had. Nailed it right there. He nailed it. I don't know if you feel like... Yeah, yeah right. Know. Yeah, let's listen right here. Listen to the 17 years old. And when I told her It's crazy. Crazy, right? That's crazy. It's so big. Four tracks. It's so 17 years old. Where is he getting this emotion and this feeling <laughs> at that age? Uh, it's it's incredible, you know. Um, it, it's really incredible. And, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't think anybody knew at the time. Maybe Jerry and Mike did. But, you know, it, it took me a, a, a long time. And then to revisit that, and I, and I thought to myself, my God, this guy is just unbelievable. Yeah. And, and um, but you know, unfortunately, sometimes you don't know uh, things until uh, you don't know a great moment until it becomes a memory. You know, it's that you know what you're absolutely right. But then you had a second great moment with Jay Black, yeah. which is how do you you know back then is what's everybody drinking in the water? Two, two. How did you find Jay Black then? How did you guys? Hook um, Actually, one of the guys in the group, a guy named Marty Coopersmith, he he sang with him as kids. They had a group called uh, the Two Chaps on on Atlantic, and they made a record. and um, And so when when we after she cried, we tried. We had a few other records that were really great, but they didn't make it. And um, if 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 history teaches you a lesson, all of the groups that preceded us, Frankie Lyman and and the Cleftones and the Chantels and the they were all out of the business because because if you don't have a hit, you know that's the end. That was the end of it then. So we didn't have any hits. So we figured, you know, let's just wrap it up. And we basically stopped for about I don't know, maybe it seemed like a long time, but maybe it was only about you know, six, seven, eight months. And then we said, oh, you know, we went back to school and we figured, well, let's try it again. And we called Jay Trainer, and he had moved on. He had to support his family and he just, you know, he didn't have a head for it. And then uh, Marty knew this guy, Dave, Dave Blatt and uh, from Borough Park, Brooklyn. And um, he shows up, we're waiting in, in, at the Sandy's house and this car pulls up like he, he, he was a shoe salesman. He's making $60 a week for Tom McCann. Real Tom McCann. I remembered well. <laughs> and a car pulls up like an old car. It was 1963. I don't know, 62, something like, I don't know, something like that. And this car pulls up, it's from the fifties, like a Ford with a, with a rope holding the hood down. <laughs> And he gets out of the car and he was like, uh, like a hitter, you know what that, you know, like he was like, like that, that style guy. And he came in and, uh, basically, you know, he sang, uh, you know, one of the songs that he sang was Caramia. Oh, really? And, yeah. Cause he, he had seen a, an English truck driver by the name of David Whitfield sing it on the Ed Sullivan show. But there was a whole middle part that had a lot of chords that we didn't know. So we left that part out. 
And and if you look at the David Whitfield record, it's the it's David Whitfield accompanied by the Montavani's, you know, symphony orchestra. And it became a hit, and he was on Ed Sullivan and and Jay Dave Blatt, who you know I guess had that kind of voice. He always remembered that, and he wanted to do it. So we went to Lieber and Stola. They didn't want to do it. You know, it was not for them. And you know, they really? were into they were into Big Mama Thornton, the Drifters. They wrote mm -hmm. Drip Drop and Ruby Baby. You know, they didn't want to do it, and they also didn't want to. And then. Over the years, other people didn't want to do it. So it wasn't until 1965 that we find that finally we had a bunch of hits. And so he said, I want to do Care Me. And we they said, OK. And they put it on the flip side of a song. And then the next we were on tour in the Midwest. And the next thing we knew, you know, every you to turn the dial. And every time you turn the dial, it was it was it was on the radio. It's so wild. It was it was a flips. It was on the flip side. It was a B side song. Yeah, it was the B side. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. None it's of like none of the producers, you know, they thought it was you know corny or whatever. Maybe it is. I don't know. Because they were, I guess they were. It was like Doc Palmas, like that, you know, under the blue yeah. crew back then. And yeah, everything. save the last dance for me. You yeah, know? save the the yeah. drifters, just all that stuff. What a yeah. what a great. Thank goodness you guys did it. It is an anthem song. I, it it's like when I want to have do my Italian cook night. That's has to be played. It, rem, it just reminds me of Canarsie when I was a kid, growing up and going to this place on Flatlands Avenue called Annapolis. And I remember as a kid them playing it with the little TV in the corner. You know the old school. You get the pasta and the silver tin. Oh. <laughs> you know back in the old oh, days. The tin. The tin. The tin. You know, you, you that doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't, but in Brooklyn, yeah. you'd get it, and the tin was so hot. It was so you'd hot. Get, you'd get baked ziti in the tin, or or or, or field parmesan, or it, the t and it'd be the cheese the would be brown, brown. It, was, it would be brown. It's, what a lovely m m memory that is. Yeah. I love that. You don't get that, and it made wow. it made the taste. It's like it drinking. Made it taste. It made it's better. It, it, it's. I'm still looking for real Italian food. You know, it's it's rough to come by. It's rough, to, but we were lucky, you know, you and I, because we both grew up in Brooklyn, and yeah, it was the, it was there was so many joints, little mom and pop places you'd go in there, and it was great. And they had the real deal. They had the real deal. And it's so cool having you here, and great to share this music with you and listen with you, because this is where it all began. You know. It really did. Well, you know what? Everybody that's watching, we'll put all links in the description. You're going to catch Kenny. You'll see all his tour dates. We'll put everything there. And I can't wait for the doc to come out. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Heart and soul. Okay. Mr. Vance, thank you for spending right, some time brother. with us. We'll speak soon. And um, Absolutely. Any questions? No, pla it's a pleasure, man. I have a sm I'm smiling for the whole hour. Uh, I enjoy it. Also, you can find us on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.